Yo, big dogs. I literally have one question for y'all, and it's whether or not you think Kareem Hunt, Aaron Jones, and Alvin Kamara are going to combine for three touchdowns this weekend. Kareem Hunt is playing against the Cincinnati Bengals. Aaron Jones is playing against the Carolina Panthers. Alvin Kamara is playing against the Carolina Panthers because Aaron Jones is not playing against the Carolina Panthers. Aaron Jones is playing against the Houston Texans who probably have the worst run defense in the NFL. We have three elite touchdown scorers playing against three of the worst defenses, okay? So if you believe these three are going to combine to score three touchdowns this week, we are going to make a lot of moolah together. That is why we are doing the touchdown dance on Monkey Knife Fight, okay? I want to start off this video hot because it's all downhill after this, if we're going to be honest. So on Monkey Knife Fight, when you're on the homepage, you're going to click a little football, a little football action upstairs, star shootout combines all of the games together for the week or the early games at least you're going to go to star shootout you're going to go to touchdown dance and then you add the players and we're going to go kareem hunt aaron jones alvin kamara boom okay if they go over two and a half touchdowns combined so if they score three touchdowns combined you're going to one and a half x the money that you put down on this game it's beautiful and whatever you put down you're going to be able to double it because if you deposit with the promo code b d g e you're going to double your deposit. Simple as fucking that. Okay? So if you throw $10, use promo code BDGE. When you deposit, you're going to get $20. If you throw $20, you are going to get $40. If you throw $50, up to $50, you're going to get another $50 on top of that. If you're feeling risque, we could 3x our money. We can go over 3.5. I, I, I see no problem these guys scoring four touchdowns together. Okay? The matchups are beautiful. They can't stop getting in the fucking end zone. They're allergic to not scoring, okay? So as far as I'm concerned, three exit. You want to throw 20 down on it? You're going to walk away with $80. The 20 you originally put down plus $60 winning. We need it to start off hot. We need it, and this is probably the easiest monkey knife fight player prop game that I've seen all year. Monkeyknifefight.com. Use the promo code BDGE when you deposit. The link will be in the description. I love y'all. Let's get into the video. What's cracking? Big. Oh, oh, welcome bike to the channel. Welcome bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE right there on the wall. Big dogs got to eat fantasy football. It's Friday. It's Friday. So we are talking rankings. All right. I'm going to run through my rankings position by position. That's a lie because I don't really do that. I just kind of parade my way through guys that I'm higher or lower on than consensus. These Friday videos are edited by not Scott. Literally, that's his Twitter name. His name's Robert. So make sure you're going to follow Mr. Robert on Twitter. I will link his tweet, twatter, Twitter, twatter. Uh, put it up on the screen for yourself, Robert. So shout out to Robert for editing these. Uh, our editing team is by far and away the best in the game. There's no questions about that. We've got Robert doing these. He does the best of weekly videos as well that we put on Instagram and Twitter. Make sure that you're following us everywhere. Oh, we got to put our socials up there. Make sure you're following me there. Scott's obviously uh, a master behind the keyboard. Then Wizard Fingers, as soon as they touch the keyboard in Premiere Pro, he's putting up an absolute masterpiece every week for Fade the Public. And then we've got our editor, Ike, of course, doing all the stuff with Fade the Public, the vlog stuff. He's doing Bagels and Locks. He's doing Animal's House. So we've got the best production team in the game by far, uh, which is huge because... We clearly have a lack of talent. They make us look good. So shout out to them. Shout out to, shout out, honestly, just shout out to everybody. Shout out to anyone who's a fucking human being. Shout out to, I mean, shout out to dogs too. And definitely not shout out to cats. Shout out to orangutans, man. Orangutans don't get enough credit for just being fucking orangutans. If I ever pass away and I come back as something, I pray to the Lord it's an orangutan. For no other reason than that, that arm length, man. You know how good of an intro I could do if I was an orangutan? I'd be doing some crazy shit. I need to get back on topic before we get completely off the rails. Y'all ready? Let's tuck our shirts in. Let's stop yelling. Let's eat. Okay, so my rankings are live right now. Half PPR, full PPR, standard. 
Superflex, whatever you need. They're live right now. Patreon.com forward slash BDGE. You can literally stop listening to my orangutan talks and go straight to Patreon. Sign up to be a Patreon member. You'll get the rankings. Let's talk about some dudes that are sticking out in those rankings, though. All right. Sore thumb, needle in a haystack. That's what we're here for. That's what these Friday videos are for. First off, just some quick notes. I mean, we have the Raiders offensive line right now going against Tampa Bay. Trent Brown, I believe, tested positive for COVID. As soon as someone tests positive, they do contact tracing. So anyone that's come in physical contact with that person also needs to start being tested. And they do contact tracing quarantine, basically, which is the entire offensive line of the Raiders. So as of right now, they're going to be without Trent Brown. This is going to be a huge fucking problem, obviously, if they're missing their offensive line. So keep a very close eye on this. If they're without all their starters or if they're, if they're without three of their five stars or four of their five stars, whatever the case may be, like Derek Carr basically moves down to an unstartable ranking. He'll probably be like a quarterback 29. If Tampa Bay, for whatever reason, is um, is available in your league as a pickup, I got like a string fucking my my hair is too crazy, too curly. I don't even know what to do with it. I've been giving myself haircuts since like quarantine started. And, um, and it's, it's not good for business, but we will continue through the adversity. It's what we do here. Derek Carr, unstartable Tampa Bay needs to be picked up and started ASAP. They moved up to defensive ranking numero one, considering the offensive line problem. Josh Jacobs is going to move down significantly because almost all of his fantasy production comes off the bike of rushing production. And that's gonna be a problem. It's also gonna move Darren Waller down because if they don't have an O line, they're probably gonna ask their tight ends to block a little bit more. And they're just not gonna have time to develop plays downfield. So this could be an absolutely massive problem for the Oakland Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders. Shout out to my friend Alex, who just moved out to Vegas. If you watch this, which I highly doubt you do. Other quarterbacks to talk about. Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill is a dude who is going outside like the top 13, 15 rankings right now, strictly because of the matchup against Pittsburgh. He's a top 10 quarterback for me this week. I think I have him up at nine, maybe actually just at the cusp of it at 10. And this the Steelers defense is awesome, no doubt about it. They are elite against the run, okay? They're elite against the run in every way possible. Their pass rush is great, but their coverage is mediocre. Now, under pressure, right? Assuming that's going to happen. Anytime you play against Pittsburgh, you're going to be under pressure because of Watt and Hayward and all those guys. Ryan Tannehill has the single highest quarterback rating under pressure this season per PFF. Seven to zero touchdown and interception ratio. Tannehill has just been way too good, way too good for me to sit him at this point. Uh, the Steelers are going to be without Devin Bush. Corey Davis is on his way back on the field. One low-key thing that I found, this is like a little hidden trick when it comes to streaming quarterbacks. When we get bike-to-bike-to-bike home games, I love streaming quarter. Anytime you need a tiebreaker for streaming defenses, for streaming quarterbacks, always go as long as, you know, it's not like we need, we don't need to jump a guy up 10 rankings just because he's at home. But if you're in a tiebreaker, quarterbacks playing at home always play better. The more home games in a row they get, the better. This will be his third game in a row. They start to go on hot streaks when this happens. When you get to stay at home, you get to prepare. You're not wasting time traveling. You're not wasting time in new hotels and getting a new sl fucking sleep circadian. I'm break only technically a doctor, only technically a scientist. Okay. These are the hard hitting big facts that were given to you. Third game in a row. He's already hit that hot streak. Last two games, he's put up like 30 fantasy points. So he gets this third home game and I'm, I'm, ex I'm expecting him to put up another big fantasy game. At home over the last two seasons, he's averaged 254 passing yards, 2.8 passing touchdowns, 17 rushing yards, and 0.44 rushing touchdowns per game. Now, the loss of Taylor Luan is going to hurt, right? His left tackle towards ACL out for the season. But again, Tannehill is very good under pressure. Like I said, highest quarterback rating in the league while under pressure. Now, Tannehill is a guy that I'm starting over a lot of dudes that you would have probably going over him just based on the matchup. Um, again, I have met about quarterback 10. I have Cam as quarterback 11, Burrow quarterback 12, Breeze at 13, Brady at 14. And those might switch a little bit. Like if um, I think Michael Thomas is probably going to be out, so Breeze would definitely be off that conversation list anyways. Brady, depending on the offensive line for the Raiders, I highly doubt they're going to need to attack if they're without their offensive line. So he might move down. But regardless, the point is Ryan Tannehill, way better streaming option than being given credit for. He has looked incredible and he will keep that up week seven. Jared Goff will not keep up anything. I don't think he's got anything to keep up right now. But Jared Goff, over the last two seasons, here, Jared Goff is one of those game splits guys, right? He needs like a very good matchup. He needs very good circumstances happening to him in order for his fantasy game to come to fruition in a way that's positive for fantasy owners that, that tend to play him. Over the last two seasons, Jared Goff's per game numbers versus top 16 pass defenses, so 
pass defense is ranking inside the top 16. So it's not like an elite pass defense, but anyone in the above average category. He averages 255 passing yards, 0.9 touchdowns, 1.2 interceptions versus bottom 16 pass defenses, 309 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, 0.6 interceptions, massive split. They're playing against the Bears. The Bears have yet to allow a single fantasy quarterback to score more than 17.2 fantasy points against them this year. Not a single one. We're in week seven. They haven't allowed a single quarterback over 17.2. They're allowing literally on average 11.7 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. They've allowed four passing touchdowns through six games. Think about how ridiculous that is. There have been multiple quarterbacks that have thrown for four passing touchdowns in a single game this year. Goff's last two games against Chicago. Last year, he had one. The year prior, he had one. He threw for 178 yards in one of them, 180 yards in the other one, zero to five touchdown to interception ratio in those two games against the Bear. This could be an absolutely terrible offensive game, honestly, for both teams. Uh, so I, I want nothing to do with Jared Goff this, this week. The line on this one, Chicago's getting six points. Are we, are we sniffing a lock of the millennium? I'm fucking smelling it. I'm smelling it. It's, it's stinky, but we're taking it. Chicago plus six. Put it on the mortgage. Put it, put it on your kids' college savings account. Chicago plus six. I'm done with quarterbacks. We play super flex league, so these guys aren't available anywhere in leagues that we play in. But I figured I'd show some one quarterback streamer loves to y'all out there that do. You know, this is, again, it's a big shout out to all human days. For all the orangutans, I'm sure you all are not very well developed. You probably play in one quarterback leagues. Running bikes. First guy I kind of want to just talk about real quick, Kenyon Drake coming off the massive day against Dallas. I know he had the big run at the end, but even without that run, his stats were good. This is what I talked about last week. And I will preface by by saying he's like my running back 16 or 17. So he's not really a guy that you're going to sit anyways. He's like a pretty solid RB2, just given the, the atmosphere of the running back landscape in fantasy right now. But here's what I'll say. Last week, I mentioned this in the video. We talked about it for a while. Uh, Kenyon Drake was going against the Cowboys. And the Cowboys, up to this point in the season, have allowed the second most rushing yards to opposing running backs, the third most touchdowns to opposing running backs. Conversely, they have allowed the single fewest receiving yards to opposing running backs, third fewest receptions, and zero receiving touchdowns to opposing running backs. If there was ever a week for Chase Edmonds to be startable over Drake or for that hype of Chase Edmonds over Drake to come to a halt... It was last week, and this is exactly what happened. So do I trust Drake now? Like, absolutely fucking not. We, we we saw what Drake was for the first five weeks of the season. Now he plays one of the softest run defenses in the NFL. Blows the fuck up. They play the Seahawks this week, who have allowed uh, the third fewest rushing yards to opposing running backs on the year. Alexander Madison had a big game against them in week five prior to their bye. But, but, but before that. The single highest rushing total against them was Ty Gurley back in week one, 56 yards. But they are without Jamal Adams, so I believe they're going to be without him again this week. It's possible that, you know, they're still soft uh, like they were against Madison and the Vikings the week prior. And uh, I don't really know why I wasted my time. I'm just letting you know that we knew the fucking Drake blow up game was coming. So I'm not throwing him up there in the RB1 conversation. But DeAndre Swift, though, DeAndre Swift, you want to talk about hyped up bikes? He's got to be someone I got to cover. You know, I probably have him around consensus. I think he's up at running back 18, 19, 20 in that area for me, which is probably about where he's going in ECR. The Falcons have, you know, you look on paper and you're like, oh, they're going against the Falcons, the worst team that's ever fucking stepped foot on a football field in the history of the NFL. Agreed. So you think, hmm, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful matchup for Mr. DeAndre Swift. The breakout is here. Last year's Miles Sanders. This year it's DeAndre Swift. They've been surprisingly very good against running backs on the ground this year. However... Defending against running backs through the air, different story, okay? New novel, not even in the same genre. We went from nonfiction to fiction. We went from fucking horror fiction to romance. Holy shit. My doorknob's off the hinges. Sorry, I know we just jumped back in out of nowhere. My entire door handle, like on my front door, just flew off the fucking hinges this morning. Like, I know I've been working out and the forearms look fucking tasty on here i literally open the door and the door handle just flies off so the guy came here to fix it i i guess that's kind of like a metaphor for my life you know just shit flying off the hinges there is one thing that is not flying off the hinges however that is my grooming Got a lot of questions about the beard a lot of questions about the haircut usually not positive ones but i'm referring to the downstairs grooming y'all actually watched me 
Shave Snacks' unibrow with this yesterday on Fade the Public. And no, I did not wash this before I shaved that on his head. So shout out to Snacks. Just another shout out, another human shout out in this one. But this Manscaped keeps me beautifully trimmed downstairs. If you've ever had problems shaving downstairs, stop using a razor, first of all. Listen, we're not, we're not prepubescent six-year-olds that have no hair down there. We're going to grow hair, people, men, whoever is out there. This probably works for women as well. I don't know why the fuck it wouldn't work for women as well. It's literally just shaving hair. This thing does not cut you. That is a guarantee by me, by manscaped.com. The products are available in UK, Australia, Canada as well. So if you have not been able to get your hands on the lawnmower 3.0, now's the time. Now is the time to cut yourself without actually cutting yourself. They've got an entire pack, like a the, the grooming kits. I forget what the name of it is, but it's a beautiful grooming kit. comes with ball toner, ball deodorant, this thing. A beautiful travel bag, too, which I use quite often when we're not in lockdown. And uh, I use this quite often now that we're not really in lockdown anymore because you don't want people going downstairs while you are not nicely groomed. Okay? Manscaped.com. Use the promo code BDGE when you head over there. You'll get 20% off plus free shipping. 20% off plus free shipping. Never have problems shaving downstairs again. No nicks, no cuts. I'm Nick. Let's cut. Where were we? I don't remember where we were. We're talking about DeAndre Swift. Oh, it's perfect. This is Swift. That's Swift. DeAndre Swift. All right. So Falcons stink at covering running backs through the air. They've allowed 46 receptions to running backs so far. Second in the league behind only Carolina. 328 receiving yards, two running bikes, second behind Las Vegas, and a league leading four touchdown receptions, two running bikes. Now it gets tricky because this backfield, this is more of me just like giving you my thoughts on Swift, not necessarily saying he's a must start this week or a guy that you should sit or sell high. It gets tricky because, you know, you look at the snap counts and everything tells you that it's still pretty much a timeshare. But this is the first time that we actually saw Swift have more opportunities than AP. This is the first time we saw anyone really come close to AP in terms of opportunity on a game by game basis, more touches, more opportunities, and more so to the catching point or the receiving point for Swift. Uh, he's ran 65 routes this year compared to 47 from AP, 41 to carry on. And he has doubled each of their yards per route run numbers. And he's by far and away the most efficient one through the air. The problem is when you discount week one, right? Week one, he had a big receiving role where he ran 23 routes like AP's nine. So if you look at everything after that, from weeks two through six, the routes run are nearly dead split between Swift and AP, 42 to 38. Yards per route run, though, the efficiency metric that we look at for fantasy, Swift is more than four times more efficient than AP through the air. It's just wildly terrible coaching by Matt Patricia. Like, what else is fucking new? On the flip side, though, on the ground, right now, the single highest graded run blocking offensive line in the NFL per PFF, Detroit. The Lions. You go to playerprofiler.com. Completely free to see all these advanced analytics. Playerprofiler.com. Type in DeAndre Swift's name in the search box. You scroll down. They have a statistic that says run blocking efficiency. What that does is discount everyone else on the field. It looks at the offensive line on plays where only that running back, that whoever you typed in, was running the ball. DeAndre Swift's run blocking efficiency per player profiler, number one. There's a lot of things going right for this kid right now. So this does kind of seem like a trap game where he was splitting snaps last week. He had the big performance despite not really taking hold of the backfield. Now we're like, good matchup. He's finally taking over. Could be a disappointing week. I'm erring more on the side that I feel good starting him as an RB2 flex play this week. So DeAndre Swift around my RB18, 19. I also feel fine starting both LA Chargers running bikes. Justin Jackson, Joshua Kelly. I think they're both startable this week. They play the Jaguars. The Jaguars have allowed the fifth most fantasy points to Zay Position on the year. And I know Jackson looked way better than Kelly did last week. Uh, he looked more spry, explosive, got more touches, more opportunities. And it's because Justin Jackson is probably better than Josh Kelly. And here's the thing. Josh Kelly is a ground guy, right? He needs to get his work and his fantasy production through the ground. They've played at New Orleans and at Tampa Bay the last two weeks. Those are unforgivable run defenses. You're not going to have success. And it, I think we know at this point, Josh Kelly is not good enough as, a, as an NFL running back to produce in the face of elite competition on the ground in Tampa Bay, in New Orleans, on the road. Okay. He's just not good enough to overcome those types of matchups. This is not that. The Jacksonville Jaguars are not those matchups. They're nine-point favorites, the Chargers are, right? Nine-point favorites. Expect LA to dominate 
the ground. Expect L- LA to dominate the time of possession in this one. Expect them to kind of manhandle and do whatever the fuck they want to do against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I would be very surprised if both running backs don't come away with 15 plus touches in this one. I think they want Justin Jackson to play the Eckler role. I think they want him to see most of the pass catching uh, work. But Josh Kelly is still going to be very much involved. I would be surprised if he doesn't, you know, again, hit around that 15 touch mark, get the goal line carries, which should be there as opposed to the last couple of weeks when they really weren't against Jacksonville this week. So I have uh, Justin Jackson ranked higher, of course, you know, by probably like five or seven spots. But I think both of them are in the RB2, probably more so flex play for Josh Kelly conversation. Whereas a guy like Devin Singletary can get all the way the fuck out of here. All right. All the way the fuck out of here. Devin Singletary versus the Jets. I am significantly lower on Singletary versus ECR. Right now, he is like the RB 19 or 20 in the ECR rankings. I have him down at 28 or 29. I have no fucking idea how we can look at Devin Singletary right now and see, yeah, rock solid RB2. Rock solid mid RB2. Over the last two weeks, he has finished as RB35 and RB45 in fantasy football. Now, I don't think the matchup is tough, uh, but Zach Moss returning, it doesn't make Singletary the backup or anything, but it hurts his usage without a doubt. Like you look at this chart, games without Moss on the left side, games with Moss on the right side. His snap rate goes down by almost 26%. Routes run go down by uh, nearly eight routes. Touches go down by a whole five. Half PPR fantasy points. He goes from 11.3 without Zach Moss down to 7.1. Red zone carries. Two games without Zach Moss, he had seven. In the three games with Zach Moss, he has one. Goal line carries. Three to zero. So Devin Singletary... I mean, unless you're like kind of desperate as uh, for a flex play, I really don't want any part of him. And we'll, we'll continue to see Zach Moss kind of work back into the role that he had in the beginning of the year, weeks one and two, when he was on the field for about 40 percent of the of the snaps. And now that he's finally healing from the foot injury, I think we continue to see that last week. It was only like 26 percent of the snaps he played on. But I think we'll, we'll continuously see that creep up a little bit by little bit by little bit until they're back in their 60 40 split. And obviously that is not good news for your boy, Devin Singletary. Who else we got in the running bike position? Um, I don't hate Latavius Murray this week. I'm a little bit higher on him than consensus is. I believe I have him at running back 31. And ECR has him as like 38. They're going against Carolina. So it's obviously a beatable matchup on the ground. I'm not sure if Michael Thomas is going to play. If not, they'll probably look to use their running backs heavily. And that should be really good usage for Latavius, who's seen good usage over the last two weeks in a row now he's been a pretty big part of their game plan since Michael Thomas has been out so uh 50 50 chance to probably get into the end zone and 12 to 13 14 touches good enough for me to get Latavius Murray in there as a flex play let's move over to the wide receivers before we do so before we do so though I got a few things I guess if y'all have been into the box breaks box breaks uh we will have one coming this weekend and I think we have a three three or four spots left in this one by division we're doing six panini origins these are these are big motherfuckers these are uh the packs in which you can hit some very valuable 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 cards so if you want in on the box break what we do is we sell off per division and we randomize it so you buy in uh, it's going to be 300 dollars per division and we randomize it on the live stream so you might get the afc east you might get the nfc south i don't know but if you want in one division 300 six boxes it's six boxes of the panini origins dm me dm us on twitter it's at bdge two underscores at bdge two underscores dm us let us know that you want one of the divisions they might be filled by the time y'all watch this to be honest so get to me asap when you do watch this let's move over to wide receivers let's talk about some shadow coverage per pff there's only one matchup in which they expect to see shadow coverage which is not usually the case so we'll have to see what they got going on there Bradley Roby on Devontae Adams. Now, Roby's been good this year. He's actually been the only cornerback that's been asked to shadow the opposing number one in every single week this year, but he's not an issue. We just saw A.J. Brown fucking eat his breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, and he's Devontae Adams, so it doesn't really matter. Other projected matchups that aren't supposed to be shadow coverage but are definitely going to impact the opposing wide receiver. First up is Will Fuller versus Jair Alexander, Allen Robinson versus Jalen Ramsey, T. Higgins versus Denzel Ward. So those are big three matchups that I think we need to kind of call out here. Will Fuller facing a lot of Jair Alexander probably means it's a really good spot for Brandon Cooks, who's had two monstrous blow-up games, bike-to-bike now with Bill Bryan. The fuck out of Houston, okay? So you have to really, really like the spot for Brandon Cooks. 
He is right now, I think, my wide receiver 22 or 21. ECR has him all the way down at wide receiver 33. So I'm much higher on Brandon Cooks than the consensus here. With Fuller facing uh, Jair Alexander, Brandon Cooks, who is not the slot receiver there, is going to see probably Josh Jackson the uh, most of the time. Okay, And Josh Jackson was the second round pick the same year they took Jair Alexander, the Packers did in the first round. They took Josh Jackson in the second round, and he's been a bust for the for the Green Bay Packers. So that's who Cooks projects to get because again, they are not running on the slot. They're both running the outside. It's possible that they just split the Jair Alexander coverage 50-50, but I would assume they're going to put Jair on Will Fuller, which has to move him down the ranks a little bit, moves Brandon Cooks up the ranks a little bit, and we just love what we've seen. He's an every down player now, getting a ton of targets and opportunities from Deshaun Watson. So we like Brandon Cooks a lot. Al Robinson will go against the Rams. The Rams have been very stingy against fantasy wide receivers. And a lot of that being because of Jalen Ramsey. Now, A-Rob faced Jalen Ramsey last year. A-Rob, in that game, caught four of six targets for 15 yards. I understand it's going to be nearly impossible to sit Allen Robinson, given the fact that he hasn't seen fewer than nine targets in a game yet this season. But up until last week, the Rams hadn't allowed a wide receiver to top 13.1 half PPR fantasy points against them this year. Debo ended up with 15 in that game last week. So he kind of broke that streak. However, like almost all of Debo's production came on designed, manufactured, like behind the line of scrimmage plays. They weren't like Debo Samuel was beating them deep as an actual receiver, getting separation, beating them downfield. It was like, get the ball out really quick to Debo, let him do some work uh, by the line of scrimmage. So that's not the type of player Allen Robinson really is. Like, of course, they'll run some screens to him, but like as the receiver that Robinson is, as a possession guy, as a downfield guy, probably doesn't bode too well for him. And the Rams had no trouble keeping guys that are similar to him in terms of like route running prowess and stuff like Amari Cooper, Stephon Diggs, Terry McLaurin, kept them in check. So A-Rob stonks going down. And you have T. Higgins versus Denzel Ward. Uh, I just bring him up because he's coming off another huge game and he's taken over as an every down player and he's looked really good doing it. But Denzel Ward has looked very, very good this year. He's number three in player profilers, cornerback rankings, okay? And they have not used shadow coverage with Ward this year. So I don't expect it, but I do still expect a heavy dose of Ward on Higgins. I doubt opposing teams are like, yeah, we need to take A.J. Green out of the fucking equation. If that's the equation, your equation is wrong. Your math is fucking wrong, and you can pay for a TI-84 calculator and get it right. Denzel Ward should be on T. Higgins. I have Boyd ranked higher. And I have T. Higgins as like a low-end wide receiver three going into this week. I do like one rookie wide receiver, though. One rookie wide receiver, and that's Jerry Judy. I have him all the way up at wide receiver 33. And that's going to be a lot. And a lot of you guys are like, why the fuck would you have him all the way at wide receiver 33? Good question, people. Great fucking question. I don't know. Not true. I do know. Okay. He's been good this year for the most part. He's been seeing a lot of targets. In the beginning of the year, he saw a lot of targets, had the big touchdown game, then they had the bye, and then he's coming off the bad game. So over the last two, three weeks, he's been, or the last two weeks, he's been irrelevant because he had the bad game last week and the bye before that. So he kind of fades from your mind. Last week, he caught two of five targets for like 30 yards or some shit like that. Drew Locke only completed 10 passes in that entire game versus the Patriots. 10 passes. What do you want Jerry Judy to do? He only attempted 24. So when you have five targets and your quarterback attempts 24, that 21% target share is not as worrisome as you would originally think it to be. Chiefs are nine and a half point favorites against the Broncos, which means Luck's pass attempts or Drew Locke's pass attempts. This is me wishing Andrew Luck back onto the field. Drew Locke's pass attempts should probably double in this game. Maybe not double, but like they should be in the 36-ish range, which is going to be good for Jerry Judy's chances of seeing seven to eight to nine targets in this one. The Broncos run D is very good which means the Chiefs are probably going to pass the ball a lot, score a lot, flipping the ball back over to Drew Locke and the Broncos, forcing them to pass the ball a lot. I also think you could say the same thing for Tim Patrick, who's been balling out recently too. So I have both of them ranked very close to each other and both of them as like wide receiver threes that I think you can put into your lineup and feel okay doing so. Last position. On the position list. Tight ends. It is fucking ugly this week. It is so ugly. Right now I have Hawkins all the way up at three, which is ridiculous but the reason he's up there is because Waller, I moved down with the whole O-line COVID thing, as I explained prior. So I have Hawkinson all the way up at three because there's no other options. You could probably argue Hunter Henry above Hawkinson at three, but I have him at four. Jared Cook versus Carolina, I have him way above consensus. But if Michael Thomas is going to miss again, I don't hate the volume opportunity that could possibly be there. Like, when I need to start doing that shit for a top five tight end, you know we're in shambles. When I need to start, like, twisting my words and putting out fake pitch of my voices we're in trouble 
Jared Cook at five. I like Gronk a lot too. I like Gronk, man. We're seeing him play a big role in this offense with OJ Howard out and with these wide receivers banged up and shit. So I like Gronk too, Robert Tanyan, and I just fucking hate everybody else. I pretty much just hate everybody else. What do we got? What do we got? And we got Noah Fant and Jonu Smith, I believe. Fant is, I, I think they're both limited. They're at the bottom of my rankings, but they will be adjusted for as the practice reports and the injury reports come out for the remainder of the week. Uh, again, you could see the updated rankings. They are available on patreon.com forward slash BDGE. If you sign up to be a Patron, you will also get access to tomorrow's live stream. Every Saturday, I go live on YouTube for the patrons where you can ask me any questions y'all want. Q&A, sit, start, trade, waiver wire, fucking the TV show, The Wire. It doesn't matter. Anything you want to ask me about, I will answer y'all patrons. Patreon.com slash B-D-G-E. That's all we got for y'all today. So I will leave you with Everything that I plug today, manscaped.com, promo code BDGE. When you sign up, free shipping, 20% off your order. Monkey Knife Fight, promo code BDGE. They're going to double whatever the fuck you deposit on Monkey Knife Fight. It's a beautiful thing. You want to bet 20? Beautiful. You get to bet 40 now because of the promo code BDGE, monkeyknifefight.com. You want in on the box breaks. Let's break. Let's break some boxes. Panini Origins, three of them, six of them. I lied. Six of them. Division still up. DM us on Twitter. At BDGE, double underscores. Make sure you're following Robert at not Scott BDG, I believe. I'll put that in the description for y'all. That's all I got for y'all today. I'll see you on Patreon. I'll see you in the live stream tomorrow. Nothing but love for everybody, except for snacks. Peace.